Well, there seemed to be some interest in this radio, so I figured I'd do a little video on it. This is my loose coupler with a tuning coil, also called a loading coil. And I have a detector unit and it's hooked up to an AK speaker. Um, I'll turn it on right now. Actually, I'll send a signal to my broadcaster so you can hear it. Let's start her up. Some nice 20s music, period music. So, this is the um, antenna tuner used to match the receiver to the signal. You can see that the signal went down a little bit because I out tuned it. I put it up where it belongs. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Now that's about um, 175 wines and about an inch and a quarter bicycle pump too, believe it or not. And it's um, 270 micro henrys. And it goes down to 0 0.002 micro henrys. Here you've got your typical um, loose coupler with your primary. It's not tapped, but I put a slider on it, and I pulled that out of an old Thorola Isolidine radio and uh, modified it to work together with this coil that I wound over a cardboard tube. And here is the secondary. It also has several taps on it, just some brass slugs. It's quite a difference as you put it in there. And here is something that was not available in the teens. It makes a huge difference. A tuning cap, nice and small. Now this is the um, um, rectifier section, and it's got an Atwater Kent selector switch. This is off a of Model 20. I think they put them on a few different radios. And in the back here, you can see I've got a couple of different um, crystals to choose from. This one here is actually a grid capacitor resistor circuit. And I opened up that resistor and I put a germanium diode in there. And behind here, in this little glass case, there's also another crystal. Um, now, the, the difference between the two of these things is the one with the capacitor on it, when I select that, it gives a bassier sound. Um, everything here is pretty much period. The meter, though, that's a really cheap Chinese um, milliamp meter. And I discovered I can use that by accident. I was experimenting with many different crystals for detecting the, um, the signal. And I used an LED to see what would happen. And to my surprise, as I tuned it in, the LED got brighter and brighter as I tuned it. And I said, well, I think I can actually use a meter with it. And I tried it out and it worked. So, there you have it. Not a difficult radio to build. Works quite well. Try it out. One thing I will add is that um, I think this is more what radio sounded like back in the day. Um, there is just no distortion. There, there's no, you know, tube noise, no interference from machinery that's operating nearby, no 50 or 60 cycles per second hum. It's just pure sound. So for a few dollars worth of components, oh, all the wood, by the way, was made from, uh, uh, or repurposed, should I say, from uh, an old TV stand that I had. Didn't want it anymore. Dyed it up and used some French polish on it. So try it out, have some fun. <laughs>